like, well, I'm going to change the plugs there in the old girl. Figured I might as well do a compression test on her. Um, I'm just going to do a, this little doohickey here. Hard to afraid to believe. Uh, you know, this is not an actual true compression test because this engine is uh, stone cold. So eh, when the engine heats up, the metal expands. Um, you know, things fit tighter, the uh, rings seal better, and you get more compression. And that's really when you want to do a compression test is when the engine is hot. I do it with all the plugs out. Um, some people do it. They take a plug out at a time. Either way, I feel works. Some people may feel... One way is better than the other. I don't know. It doesn't bother me either way. I think as long as it's even, meaning all the, either all the plugs are out or all the plugs except the one you're testing are in, it doesn't really matter. So, let's see here. Give it a wide open throttle. That opens up the throttle. Allow maximum air in. It's not going to start because all the plugs are out, obviously. And we're going to, well, you know what? Better disconnect that fuel pump. I need that fuel pump running. I'm doing this. I'm going to set this camera down. There we go. All right. <clears throat> Look at that. That is exactly what you want to see. Uh, sharp rise within five to seven uh, revolutions. You want uh, you want that gauge to max out. And look at that. 150, and that's cold. That is beautiful. Let's see here. I believe that was, I don't know, what, five or six? Usually I do five. Maybe more than that. We'll see on this next one. Usually I do it until it just levels off. This one leveled off at 150, obviously. Right on the nose. We'll go in here to number two. If there's a better way to do this, I don't know it. This is just easy enough. I twist that hose off at some point, but whatever. All right. Three cylinder number two. Let's see what you did. Contact. So that was eight. That's probably what I did before. Check that out. That's uh, that's some really high compression. I was expecting, I was expecting anything over a hundred to be good on this old girl. I mean, it's a tractor engine, 1974. It's a Mazda, Mazda tractor engine. Uh, I believe they use these in cars in Japan, but. Couple to a Sato 550G. It's a Sato Elk. It's actually a pretty beautiful tractor. Show it to you here in a second. I got it, painted it all up. Uh, didn't have many hours on it at all. Sat in a uh, in a barn. The roof, uh, I guess, caved in on and whatnot and someone started to restore it and stopped and then I bought it and restored it the rest of the way that was eight again and we'll 
what's that one? Yeah, tick above one uh, one fifty. The other one was about one sixty five, I believe. The the highest. Excuse my fingers. This is a long process. There we go. Let's get edit all this out, huh? But I won't, because I don't. Let's see here. Gonna go in. Is that one gonna go in? Uh, I got some blow by here. That thing's not uh, sealed here. What's going on? But still, what's that? 120, even with it leaking, so I'm sure it's good too. Let's see. Try it again. I th I, it's still not seated down in there, though. What's down in there? Why it's not? The spark plug was in there fine. Yeah, I can hear it hissing there. Yeah, she's leaking, uh, leaking by there. What's going on? But still, 120 with a with a gigantic uh, a gigantic compression leak there. That's not bad. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's like it's threading in there, but it's not seating on the uh, O-ring for some reason. Take a look down in there real quick here. Let's see. Oh, the O-ring was all messed up there for one thing. Oily down in there? Or, no, it's not oily. I guess. Either way, no. Now, what I would have done if uh, if the compression was down on a cylinder or all cylinders were low, like you know, 80, uh, what I would do is take a little bit of oil and shoot in each one. Not much, just a little bit. Just has to go around the uh, the piston there. And what that does is seal the rings. And if the compression comes up in that cylinder, then you know you got some worn rings. Um, this engine being four hundred and twelve hours, she is just a young buck, uh, elderly but very spry. Let's put it. Um, so let's here. Let's see. There's another video of this tractor started. I'm sure there is. Back on it. Need a nice strap or something on the hood. Yes, there she is. Let's see. Don't mind the mess in the garage. It's a horrible mess. But yeah, there she is. Sato Elk. There we go. Sato, I'll put the top stack on the stack there with the little uh, thing there. Um, it, it did go down, actually, here, <laughs> check it out, this piece was actually rotated the other way, it went down, and the exhaust went out underneath the tractor, out underneath here, and I did not like that, so I put a little stack on it, which, uh, yeah, it's all cool, runs awesome, uh, taking it out, there's some videos on there, uh, search my channel, You'll find some videos of it. Uh, more recently, pulling a go-kart out, I think. If I haven't uploaded that, I will upload it. Um, 
But uh, yeah, little four cylinder engine here. Like I said, Mazda. Uh, somewhere. Let's knock some stuff over. Somewhere. There it is. My old Mazda symbol right there. Check her out. There's a, a block off plate I made. Had a uh, mechanical fuel pump, which I uh, put a uh, nice little 12 volt pump. Comes on with the key. I disconnected it for the compression test. Um, went through the carburetor. It's it's decent. There's nothing really uh, too much wrong with it. Um, a little bright in here, huh? There we go. Check that out. Um, three speeds forward, one speed reverse. Uh, high low range. So high and low range. So really, it's uh, what six speeds forward, uh, two speeds reverse, uh, left and right independent brakes. Of course, you can lock them together. Uh, what three point hitch back there? Um, put a new steering wheel on it. I have to top that off with something. I don't know. Um, high low beam, ha high low beam headlights. Uh, why I don't know. One of them's out now that the hood's open. But yeah, um, the you know the first notch turns on the uh, dash lights there. Second notch is low beam. That third notch is high beam, which is really, really weird. Uh, let's see how it's not working because I have. Yeah, well, look at that, of course. Nothing will ever work right. Yeah, obviously. So, yeah. Let's see. There we go. High and low beams. Um, yeah, um, it's a, uh, the hydraulic system is, is, uh, live, it's got live hydraulics, uh, so they're, uh, they're always pressurized, it doesn't matter, it's not driven off the, uh, off the, uh, output shaft of the engine, the rear output shaft through the clutch, uh, some of them do not have live hydraulics, so you lose hydraulic pressure, um, this one is not like that, uh, it's got a nice, uh, brake on the, uh, three-point hitch, three-point hitch brake goes all the way to, so off, everything works. Now raise, lower. Um, yeah. Three point hitch comes down. I don't the brakes on, but in anyway. Uh, PTO 540 RPM. Uh, look at that. 540 RPM PTO. Uh, this is the uh, this is a clutch. Uh, on the PTO, which I guess I need to paint the other side of, huh? Um, so when you, uh, like if you uh, have like a four-foot bush hog on it uh, or something, single blade, something, you know, massively rotating, uh, when you hit the clutch to stop, it can actually push the tractor forward. So that is a like a one-way, uh, you know, clutch, uh, like on a bicycle. Uh, it doesn't allow that to happen. Uh, so, other than that, water-cooled four-cylinder. Nice little engine. I guess I'm getting a little wordy, so peace out.